welcome back to another episode of me reading a book and this name is The Thrills and Chills of Amusement Parks, Part 1. So, before we get started with our story, I'm wearing a new cap and this, this type of bird is a blue jay and there is a team in Toronto, Canada that is named Blue, Blue Jays. But there's also another one. Instead of naming it Blue Jays, it is named Pink Jays. So now let's get started with our story. The Thrills and Chills of Amusement Park by Jordan D. Brown. So, oh, look, she, she has, she had, she's on the ro roller coaster and she has ice cream, but the ice cream, it was, it went flying to this girl's eyes. And, but, and she's, and she has popcorn, but, but he is eating the popcorn. Look at the face of the of the roller coaster. What does he have on his head? This this it's a took. Oh it's a took. <laughs> oh look, he is he's going to see how strong he is. If it hits the little bell, that means he is very strong. And today we're going to read chapter one and chapter two. Chapter 1, The Signs of Ah! Amusement parks have it all. They have thrill rides that make your heart race as you twist, turn, and get flipped upside down. And when you're ready for a snack, there's cotton candy, ice cream, and other goodies gallery. Step right up and discover the science behind the rides you love and the treats you meet. So here's some people. Who's this guy? This, he has like one normal eye and one plus sign eye. Like he's blinking. And he's like, hello. And here's the boy with cotton candy and the girl with ice cream so it, it seems like the flavors are mm, vanilla and chocolate okay, let's i skipped the page the wait is finally over you stood in line for an hour what one hour one hour is so long, it's 60 minutes. And now it's your turn to ride the roller coaster. Soon you hear click, click, click as your car climbs the steep hill. You scream as your car zooms down the track. When it's over, you're dizzy but also curious. Why did you feel so light as your car zipped down the big hill? Why doesn't the roller coaster come off the track when it goes upside down? By the end of this book, you know the answers, and you'll be a science of fun stuff expert on amusement parks. Oh, so the cars are like rockets and he's he's having he's smiling he's having fun everybody's having fun and there they are with their seat belts the forces behind the fun the people who create Roller coasters are called engineers. 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 
engineers are creative scientists who love coming up with ideas for interesting machines and then building them. When they create amusement park rides, they ask lots of questions and run experiments. In school, engineers learn about physics, the science of motion, energy, electricity, and much more. So here they're designing it, and they need a light. One of, one of the all-time great physics expert, what experts was Isaac Newton. So, and Isaac Newton was born in 1642, and he died in 1727. So, so that means he was, he got pretty old when he died. Newton was a super smart guy who lived in England more than 300 years ago. Ooh, that's a lot of years. Although he died long before roller coasters were invented, he probably would have loved them. After all, these rides bring many of Newton's Famous ideas to light. So here's a person. He's right here on this car, on the roller coaster car. And who's this guy? Why is why is he green? Is he like in? Is he la, Is he about to vomit or something? Is he having motion six sickness or something like that? The pulling power of gravity. In the 1600s or the 17th century, century, Newton used math and science to make some important discoveries. One of his big ideas was gravity. Gravity is the invisible force that pulls objects together. Newton didn't invent gravity, of course, but he figured out how gravity works. Newton explained that for very big objects, such as our planet, the force of gravity is stronger than it is for smaller objects, such as a baseball. So here he is, and, and here's uh, an apple falling. Oh, look, it's like... Look right here, it's like the tree has a hand and is dropping the apple. Gravity is why a roller coaster car doesn't need a motor to make it go. Once the car is pulled to the top of, of a hill, gravity of a hill. Gravity does the rest of the work. When a coaster car zooms down the track, it works with gravity and goes faster. When a car travels upward on the track, it fights against gravity and slows down. By working with gravity, engineers make roller coasters exciting. Wait, why do they have glasses? Are they the experts? Laws that coasters obey. Newton wrote a book in the 1600s in which he described his three laws of motion. These laws help explain how roller coasters work. Newton's first law of motion tells us a moving object will keep moving in the same direction, at the same speed, unless some force slows it down. A roller coaster car going down a hill keeps moving, pulled by gravity on the tracks until something stops it 
or it changes its direction. When the track starts to go upward, the car slows down as it fights gravity. It's the sudden change in speed called acceleration that makes coasters so exciting. Newton's first law is sometimes called the law of in inertia. Wait, where is his neck? Where is his neck? Where is his neck? That's so weird. How can he serve? Well, Nick, it's just a story. It's not real. Inertia is a fancy word for the idea that moving objects like to stay moving. And still objects like to stay put. Roller coasters are fun to ride because they mess with your body's in inertia. As your car races forward, your body wants to keep going in the same direction at the same speed. But when the car changes direction or speed, your body takes a moment to catch up with the new plan. The seatbelt or harness pulls or harness pulls you back as your body moves forward. Newton's second law of motion tells us the speed of an object changes when an outside force acts on it. And the heavier an object is, the more force you need to change its speed. This is why the tallest hill on a roller coaster is always at the start. To build up enough energy to move the car to the end of the ride. The car has to start on a tall hill. This helps gravity to do its job. Why does he have a mask? Is he like from baseball or football or something? It's a helmet. Oh, maybe it's, oh, it's just a helmet. Newton's third law of motion tells us when one object pushes or pulls against a second object, the second object pushes or pulls back in the opposite direction. When a coaster goes through a loop, the car pushes on the track and the track pushes back on the car. If the car is going fast enough, you'll travel all the way around the loop. To help keep the ride safe, Coaster loops aren't perfect circles. They are ovals or egg shaped. This slows down your trip around so you don't travel too fast. Oh, look. Oh, I thought this card has had a number, but that was just a page number. Chapter 2 The Signs of Whoa! After riding the roller coaster, it's time for bumper cars. That's the awesome ride where you get to floor it, spin like crazy, and even smash into other cars. Luckily, no one gets hurt. Bumper cars show physics in action. When the cars collide, Newton's laws come to life. Imagine that your bumper car is perfectly still until a force is added. Your car won't go anywhere. Because of Newton's first law of motion, inertia. But if a car hits you on the front, BAM! You go backward. That's an example of Newton's third law which says, for every action, 
there is an equal and opposite reaction. The bump is the action. And your car pushing away is the reaction. Oh wait, sorry. so he is here driving the bumper car and it has the number three. And here are, here's a girl and a boy crashing with each other. And it seems like this one, since this one is crashing, then it will go back. And then maybe this one, and maybe this person will get closer and crash. All bumper cars in an amusement park ride are the same size, but people, but the people who drive them aren't. Have you ever noticed that big drivers who get bumped move less than smaller drivers? That's because of Newton's second law of motion, which tells us that the bigger an object is, the more force is needed to move it. Where do bumper cars get their power? The secret is in the ceiling of the ride, which has electricity running through it. The long pull on the back of each car touches the ceiling. When you step on the pedal in the car, electricity flows from the ceiling to your car's motor and off you go. So here are two people driving the bumper cars and here's and here is one person crashing with the other person um, shoulder. And look it look at the bar it's bended and it also has a little flat. So it's number five and number three. Next up is the pirate ship. The huge boat that swings back and forth. As the ship swings near the top, you feel as if you weigh almost nothing but when the boat swings downward you feel extra heavy what's going on it might seem like there's different gravity but that's not true that's false when what you feel is the right swinging motion pushing against gravity or pulling with it. You feel lighter at the top because the ride is working against gravity and pushing your body up. And you feel heavier as you swing downward because the right force is pulling you down. So here's the pirate ship. And here, here are people. And here's the little Lego thing. Some rides make your whole body spin. Take those big spinning rides where, where you stand up. You enter a round room with padded walls. The room slowly spins and then goes faster and faster. When the floor drops down, your body sticks to the wall. Soon, the floor rises to your feet and the spinning slows down. You're dizzy and dazzled. Why did you stick to the wall? The force that press the wall against you is known as centripetal force. This force keeps a spinning object in a curved path. As the right spun around, the wall's centripetal force tried to push your body toward the center. But your body didn't move. 
Why? Because it was pushing back with an equal opposite force, Newton's, which is Newton's third law of motion. The free fall ride is like a roller coaster that goes only up and down. After you're strapped into your seat, you're lifted high above the ground. Then you suddenly drop, pulled down by gravity. During the drop, you feel a gentle bump. You feel like an astronaut floating in space. What makes you feel weightless? The answer has to do with discoveries by the Italian scientist Gal Galileo. History says Galileo took a cannonball and other objects to the top of a tower and dropped them at the same time. Do you think the heaviest object hit the ground first? No. All the objects hit the ground at the same time, no matter what their weight. Gravity pulled them down at the same rate. On the free fall, you and your seat fall at the same rate. But because you're on top of the seat, the seat lands a moment before you do and you feel like you're floating. Funhouse mirrors let us see ourselves in weird ways. How do they work? Normal mirrors are flat, but funhouse mirrors are bent. Convex mirrors are bent out and make you look shorter. Concave mirrors are are bent and make you are bent in are bent in and make you look taller. The secret has to do with the angle at which the, the beams of light hit your eyes. When you look into a concave mirror, you have to look up to see your eyes. But with convex mirrors, you have to look down to get the right angle to see the reflection. So here she looks like a child. Wait, but where? Oh wait, maybe she's just wearing very high socks and she's not. Oh, and that's it of part one. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, click the subscribe and don't forget to click the little bell so you can watch more of my videos. And on the next part, on part two, there will be a pop quiz to see how much you've learned.